Welcome to ICS or the International Church of Shanghai. I'm so glad you can be with us today. In just a moment, we have a time to enter into a time of praise and worship with our worship team, and right after that, the preaching of the word. But first, here are some announcements in the life of our church. We continue to worship online as we await the restart of our church. As soon as we hear any further news, we will let you know. We thank you for your ongoing patience and prayers. Please note that ICS is a multi-denominational Christian church. In compliance with local government regulations, ICS online services and events are open to foreign passport holders only. Cell groups. One thing we truly value at ICS is community. Whether you're joining us for the first time or you have been joining ICS for quite some time already, cell groups are where you can develop real and lasting friendships to support one another that go beyond greetings or quick chat at church on Sunday morning. Are you interested to do Bible study? At ICS, we offer a discipleship program by partnering with CBSI for their Bible study lessons and materials. Some of the cell groups have started to study already. So come on! Join our cell groups. To find a cell group that's perfect for you, please scan the QR code or send us an email to fill in your requests. We'll reach out to get you connected right away. With the new ICS phone app, you can access online services, sermons, daily devotionals, and everything on the ICS website with ease in one place. Download yours now. Available on the Apple Store and Google Play Store. And for more details. Please scan the QR code. Have you had your daily bread today? Our body needs food every day, and so does our spirit. ICS devotionals can help you start off your day with a short message, along with some scriptures to meditate upon. ICS Kids Church now also has daily devotionals for your kids, and ICS Trailblazers also provides devotionals for the youth. All these three devotions can be accessed on our ICS website, or on our ICS app, or just simply scan the QR code. So check out our very own ICS devotions if you haven't already. Start reading and sharing our daily devotions to those who may be missing out. Do you like and feel benefited from reading the ICS daily devotionals on the ICS website or in the compilation books? These are prepared by our small devotionals team, each with a giving heart and with a skill to extract, write, and to summarize the pastor's sermon into a brief and encouraging devotional message. We are now looking for more writers and editors to join us. Do you feel like you like to write? Feed and digest on God's word, draw upon its application into our daily lives. The process of writing daily devotionals is very rewarding on so many levels. It will enrich your knowledge of Scripture, your spiritual walk in our world, and the love of God. If this sounds like you, and you would be interested and willing to contribute some of your time. To help yourself and others by providing the spiritual food for growth together, please contact me, I'm Mark, or Brian to have a chat. Thank you. The 12th ICS Charity Golf Tournament will be held on the 14th of October. Our aim is to raise 600,000 RMB this year for 10 underprivileged families of illness and students who cannot afford to support their school fees and living costs in Hongqiao Community. 
all donations will go to help their needs and there are many ways of how you can help or be involved in this event. Be a sponsors, take part in auctions, donate prizes, gifts or cash, play golf or be a volunteer helper. For more information, please contact Kathleen via email as what's shown on the screen. We want to thank all our members for your tithes and offerings. It makes a real difference, not only to the operations of our church, but allowing us to be blessed to bless the community around us. If you're new with us, don't feel any obligations whatsoever. We're just so glad you can be with us here today. If you have come prepared to give, please note ICS as a new bank tithes and offerings QR code using Alipay or WeChat Pay. Please leave the payment remarks in the remittance blank or without inputting anything. If you prefer to give via local bank transfer, please scan the QR code for the bank account information. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you so much for your support to ICS. Okay, let us come together for our time of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, Lord, we pray and we thank you, Lord God, that you bringing us together, Father God, to praise and worship you and to hear your word today. We pray and thank you, Lord God, for our praise and worship team and the unique gifts and talents that you have blessed them to be able to unify us as one body and one voice to praise and worship you. And Lord, we also want to uplift our Pastor Daniel and Pastor Kelly into your arms right now and ask, Lord God, that you bless them with wisdom, clarity and conviction as they preach your word, Father God. Let it go forth and not return void. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Father, I give you praise and thanks for who you are. Thank you for your love and your goodness towards us. Father, I'd like to take this opportunity to pray for the Chinese economy, Father. Father, we'd like to pray for all our church members who are working in the corporate world or running their own business, that your grace and your wisdom will be with them to make the necessary adjustments during these difficult times. We praise you and thank you for your uh, faithfulness in journeying with us during these past 30 months when we are meeting online. Help us to have the wisdom to do journey with the local authorities even as we continue to process with them regarding the reopening of ICS. We give you praise and thanks for your word. It is your word that sustains us, encourages us, and uplifts us as we spend quality time with you every day. We thank you for this opportunity to continue to worship you with our tithes and our offering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to share with you the part two of the seed can be stolen, but it is difficult to uproot the tree. Now, in my um, 20 over years of uh, ministry experience, I've had the opportunity to journey with different people. And uh, sometimes uh, some of our church members um, who used to work for multinational companies have to make the transition to work for either a local company or a family business. And all of you know that it is a um, big transition uh, because the culture is so different. There will be struggles because, um, you know, we at times pride ourselves that we are working with a big multinational companies and then when we begin to work with smaller companies or companies that have different cultures that demand more of our time and their operations is so different, we begin to struggle with our identity. And that's exactly what I'm talking about today where, you know, when trials and tribulation comes our way, 
It is the Word of God to help us to make the necessary adjustments so that we will experience the grace of God to carry us through these uh, difficult moments of transition. Now, how do we make that adjustments if really we need to make that uh, change in our work environment by working for a different uh, company? Uh, one of the greatest struggle will be our identity uh, regarding who we are. You know, if we have packed too much of our identity with the company that we work for, the position that we hold, then it will be more than just transiting to a local company or a company with entirely different uh, culture and management. To me, the best identity that we can have is in Christ, where we uh, acknowledge that God is our master craftsman and He has good plan and purpose for us. We are a child of the living God. We are worthy and priceless because Jesus came to die for us on the cross of Calvary. We have eternity in perspective. We are but pilgrims and sojourners of this world and uh, we have an eternity waiting for us. Praise the Lord that we are accepted in the beloved. We are justified by faith and we have peace with God. You and I, we are heir of God, joint heir with Christ and will glorify with Him. We are strong in the grace of God and we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. Praise God. Amen. And He shall supply all our needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. We have this confidence that when we pray, God hears us when we do everything according to His will. Now, all these utterance can only be said when we have allowed the Word to take root in our lives and meditate on it so that when we are hard-pressed on every side, the Word of God comes out. And when the Word of God comes out with the right association in our identity with Christ, then we can truly do all things through Christ who strengthen us and allow Him to journey with us as we transit from maybe a multinational company to a local company or a company of a different uh, of a different culture than what, what we used to be to experience. Now, how much this sermon is going to influence your life will be dependent on you. Yes, you. You will not witness in the natural what the Word of God promises unless you are open to His Word. To be ready to receive and accept the Word is a choice made by us. In fact, one of the reasons for the Word to be ministered so after worship is to ensure that we will open our hearts to the ministering of the Word after we have surrendered ourselves to Him during a time of worship. Worship makes our heart more moldable. We are reminded of the Lordship of Christ, the awesomeness and the greatness of God during worship. So let's look at the main passage for today as I expound to you this truth. Mark chapter 4 verse 13 to verse 20 says from the New King James Version. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside when the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when, the word, when, they, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time afterwards. When tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Some 34, some 60, and some 100. I would like to remind you that to remember the seed, the soil, and the fruits. No seed, no fruits. Unfavorable soil condition also bear no fruits. Good soil condition, good harvest of fruits, and more seed to be sown. Therefore, the obvious thing to do is to ensure that our heart is well positioned to be re receptive to receive and accept the word. In this parable, the seed represents the word and the soil reflects the condition of the heart of man. Let me repeat that. In this parable, the seed represents the word, and the soil reflects the condition of the heart of man. Therefore, we should not expect to see any effect of the word in our lives unless we allow the word to take root in our hearts or take time to listen to the sermons and teaching. The farmer must decide what kind of grain or seed to sow in order to reap the desired harvest in a few months or after a few years. 
If you want to have a harvest of wheat, then we must sow wheat. If we want to have a harvest of mangoes, cherries, papaya, pineapple, avocado, then he will have to sow the right kind of seed during the period of sowing. Nobody will expect mangoes where they are sown papaya seed, nor avocado if durian seeds have been sown. The sower. Verse 14 of the main text says, The sower sows the word. No farmer will expect a harvest unless they have taken time to plough and sow the seeds into the ground. I mean, if they have sowed everything in the previous harvest or finished eating all the seeds, then there will be nothing to sow either. The pastor needs to be faithful in sowing the seed of the Word of God to witness the change in the member's heart. It is God who will work in their heart too. The members must also take time to study the Word so that you will produce the desired harvest of the Word in their lives. The seed represents the Word of God. Someone must sow the, the Word. God has appointed a fivefold ministry in the church to teach and to equip His children so that they can be effective disciples in a marketplace. The full-time ministers of God will devote most of their time in prayer, preparation, and meditation of the Word. The pulpit time reflect their closet and study room time. It is very time consuming to prepare a preaching or teaching se session. There are different kinds of preaching, namely exegesis of a passage, topical, narrative, etc. Nevertheless, there will be tremendous results in the life of the ministers and the members after months and years of laboring in the Word and listening to the Word. The Word of God transformed the lives of His children. We will witness the results of the word in the lives of the believers when we have topical studies in the church. Right now, I'd like to invite you to watch a video. There's something pretty special about a handsome stand of homegrown corn or sweet corn, but the real prize lies in harvesting it. Picking the cobs, then peeling back the sheaths to reveal those full creamy kernels is just magical. While cooking them as fresh as possible for the sweetest taste, well, there's no better treat. If you fancy growing your own corn this year, you're in good company. So here are some tips to set you up for sweet success. Grow corn anywhere that receives plenty of sunshine and sow or plant into soil that's been enriched with lots of well-rotted organic matter, such as compost. Its lofty habit and feathery tassels makes for an attractive plant in its own right. Hybrid varieties are usually the most reliable choices for cooler climates. If you want especially sweet cobs, then choose varieties described as such. Many will even have the word sweet or sugar in the name. Corn loves the warmth and won't tolerate frost. While the seeds may be sown directly outside once the soil has warmed up, the safest way to sow is into pots under the protection of a greenhouse, hoop house or cold frame. This way you can begin sowing three to four weeks before your last frost date and enjoy a head start on outdoor sown corn, a huge advantage in shorter growing seasons. Sow eight to 10 seeds, half an inch or one centimeter deep into four inch or 10 centimeter wide pots. You can use any general purpose or seed starting potting mix. Alternatively, sow into smaller pots or plug trays sowing two seeds to each pot or module, then removing the weakest of the two seedlings. Keep pots moist as they grow on. Ideally, you want young plants at least 6 inches or 15 centimetres tall by the time you're ready to plant them outside. Harden off the plants as your recommended planting time approaches by leaving them outside for increasingly longer spells over the course of about a week. Corn is wind pollinated, so instead of planting it in a row, set it out in a block for the highest chance of success. If the corn isn't well pollinated, it will still grow, but it will be missing many of the kernels from the cob. Remove the young plants from their pots, then very carefully tease them apart. Try to retain as much of the soil around the roots as possible. Now plant your corn 18 inches or 45 centimeters apart in both directions. Dig a hole for each plant, Feed the roots to the bottom of the hole, then firm the soil back in. Continue planting until you have your neatly finished block of young corn. Corn also works well when it's planted among sprawling squash, which carpet the ground and help suppress weeds as the corn grows skywards. 
Remove any weeds that pop up within your corn by hand and continue weeding while you are still able to get in between the plants. Corn is sturdy and shouldn't need supporting, but it will appreciate watering in very dry weather, particularly from late summer as the tassels appear and the cobs begin to form. The cobs are ready to pick when the tassels at the end turn dark brown, usually around six weeks after first appearing. If you're unsure whether a cob's good to go, try the fingernail test. Peel back the top of the protective sheath, then sink a fingernail firmly into a kernel. If it exudes a creamy liquid, it's ready. If it's not quite there, the liquid will still be watery, and if there's no liquid, the cob is already past its best. To harvest, twist the cob and pull it away. You will realize a few things in this video. First, the soil is well tilled, soft, fertilized, regardless of whether it is in the container or the ground. He covers the seed with a topsoil to prevent the seed from the birds. He had to water the plant and ensure there is enough sunlight. It took a few months for the harvest to be ready. There was a good harvest of maize with a seed being planted into the soil some months ago. There was a multiplication effect. That's what 34, 64 and 104 means in this passage. The seed of the Word of God determines the harvest. We decide how we are to build our faith in the Word of God by studying and listening to the different topics taught in the church. Therefore, if we plant the seed of the Word on wisdom, we will witness God's wisdom operating in our midst. If we plant the seed of biblical financial principles, then we will see members living out financial freedom and blessings in God's way. If we plant a seed on covenant marriage, then we will witness strong marriages in the church. If we sow the seed on the ability to walk in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, then we will witness people living in victorious Christian life over temptation. If we sow the seed of having the grace of God to sustain us during times of tribulation, then we will witness people having joy despite being hard pressed between the rock and a hard place. If we sow the seed of the word on the word of faith, on faith, healing, miracles, then we will witness healing miracles in our midst. If we plant the seed of God's word regarding what faith is, then we will witness the raising up of a church filled with people of faith in God. If we sow the seed on the teaching of our position in Christ, then we will raise up a generation who is steady, stable, and secure in their identity in Christ. Amen? If we sow the seed on the urgency to preach the gospel, and equip the members with the right tools for evangelism. Then we will witness people being saved and members sharing the gospel. Praise the Lord. So it is important for us to come ready to receive the word and for the minister to prepare the word of God to deliver to the members every Sunday. In other words, we will reap the harvest of the seed of the word that we have sown based on the topic that's being covered over the pulpit and the kind of books that we read. We determine the harvest in our lives because the seed of the Word of God has power. It is a matter of whether we are receptive and accept the unadulterated Word of God in our lives. Remember, we determine what kind of harvest we want by being the right soil. Therefore, our heart must be willing and receptive to the teaching of the Word of God. Let me ask you a question. Are you the stony ground? Verse 16 and 17 of the passage says, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterwards, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now, have you seen the early warning aircraft that's equipped with a huge radar mounted on the top of the aircraft? Like the Hawkeye, the E2C? The radar has a wide coverage from the air like a bird's eye view. These early warning aircraft can pinpoint the location of the enemy to the friendly fighter jet so that they have a heads up. Of course, this early warning aircraft radar is able to pick up the location of the friendly forces too. Jesus gave us an early warning regarding how the enemies will steal from us. Therefore, we need to be wise, keep a lookout and deal with the devil's scheme. He also preempts pre us regarding the different condition of man's heart that determines the outcome of the Word of God in our lives. This parable also gives us an early warning regarding the different kinds of heart condition of man. 
If we realize that we belong to this category of being a stony ground, then we need to deal with the condition. Remember, the, in the earlier vi uh, video, we saw how he planted the seed in loosened soil, soil that is ready to take in the seed, to allow water to soak in, to allow the seed to germinate. Unfortunately, those seed that falls on stony ground are not able to withstand the challenges that comes their way to sift their faith regarding what they have just heard. This stony ground is a place where there is a layer of limestone embedded in the ground or filled with rocks that has thin layer of earth. It was sown on the ground where the earth is shallow. Since it is shallow ground, there is there's not much earth that it cannot take root because there is no depth. The lesson to learn is don't be shallow but be able to withstand tribulation and persecution that comes, especially when we've been warned that these will come and the objective is to steal the word and cause us to stumble. We don't want to stumble. We will also want to protect the word in our heart. The Bible says that these people receive the word with gladness, which means they are happy to receive the word. Faith in God is not a formula, but developed through a deep trust in God and His word. Faith doesn't work without a relationship with God. We need to know God by reading His Word, prayer, and be dependent on Him through living a consecrated life. God and His Word are one. The Word of God helps us to know God. We are convinced by His Word and begin to take His Word for it. Every topic that we cover will help you to develop the convic conviction on a particular truth. Meanwhile, we are wise enough to know the scheme of the enemy to steal the Word of God from us. Therefore, we must not look for the just for the promises and try out the promises, but to, uh, to roll with the punches when tribulation and persecution comes so that we will not stumble because our faith is built in the Word. We are not moved by the circumstances. We are not moved by the reports. We are not moved by our hardship experience or suffering. We are only moved by the Word of God. Amen? A farmer will also have to look out for the invasion of locusts but uh, the birds, all kinds of insects, and even foxes will destroy the crops before the harvest. The foxes will also destroy the vines. At times, typhoon, torrential rain, extreme drought, and heat wave will also destroy the crops. Likewise, the devil uses all kinds of tribulation, persecutions, cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires of the world to uproot, steal, and cause the world to be unfruitful in our lives. This passage acts as a warning and asks us to be watchful against the work of the devil. It also encourages us to be open to the word in our lives. We determine the condition of our hearts and what kind of results the word of God should have in our lives. We determine the harvest of the word of God in our lives. Meanwhile, we will have to be vigilant to ensure that the devil will not use various schemes and ways to steal the word of God from our lives. Let us be helpful by looking out for each other. Whenever we, have, we, we experience tribulation, persecution, the cares of the world, we remind each other, watch out, these are the schemes of the devil to steal the word from our lives. Keep our, life, keep our heart open. Meditate on the word of God. Let the word of God germinate. Let the conviction be so good, so deep in our hearts that it is as though the seed has germinated and grown and developed into a tree and it cannot be uprooted by the devil. Personally, I, I, I believe that there are two kinds of persecution for being a Christian and secondly, the theological stand that you hold. The first kind of persecution for being a Christian. This person is probably very happy to be saved but unaware of the price of being a Christian. Yes, we will face persecution for being a believer of Jesus Christ. John 15, 19-20 from the New King James Version, it says, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. Now, let me give you the definition of persecution based on strong concordance and also credit to precepts for expanding the definition. The Greek word for persecution is diokmos, right? To chase, to pursue, literally to refer to a chase or pursuit and figuratively means to put to flight or to pursue 
with repeated acts of enmity. To persecute is to harass in a manner designed to injure, vex, grieve or afflict. It describes the process which is meant to annoy with persistent or urgent approaches as attacks, pleas or importunities. Jesus has already warned us that we will have persecution if, it, if he was being persecuted. We will be immovable if our conviction is strong, especially convinced that we are saved. Life on earth is temporal, destined for heaven. We know that there will be suffering for being a Christian, living and standing up for righteousness. Darkness will not welcome the light. This is especially true when the value of the world is so different from the Christian values. So there, the devil will use people to persecute you, to make your life difficult, to cause affliction, to cause grief, to cause injury. But I want you to remember, all this is because you stand up for the Word of God. All this is because you stand up for God in a marketplace. Now let me give you, give you an example. How are you responding to being persecuted for LGBTQ stand if you are advocating marriage is between a man and a woman only? How are you responding to the pressure over illicit entertainment to obtain a business? How are you responding to drinking hard liquor till you are drunk over business entertainment? In fact, if you are living out the truth of the word, then there will, there will be difference from the world. Darkness does not like the light because it reveals what's bad, wrong and ugly. Well, if you are standing up against all this, then you will likely be mocked, ridiculed or even persecuted by your business partners, colleagues and bosses. That's the price to pay for being the salt and light for him. The seed of the word of God regarding how to be the salt and light of this world will be stolen if we compromise and cave into the persecution and pressure from the peers or business partners. We are able to stand up on our conviction and not stumble when pressure is applied through persecution. Now remember, the Apostle Peter's faith was being sifted when he was being questioned whether he's associated with Jesus, but he denied his association three times. He gave up his association with Jesus when tremendous pressure came upon him with persecution after Jesus was being arrested. It happened to someone who was so close to Jesus, he has heard all the teaching, witnessed the miracles and demons being cast out from people. In fact, he even walked on water when Jesus appeared on a lake and asked him to come. That's what persecution does to us. We might let go of the word and our conviction when pressure is being applied to us. Praise God that God is merciful and gracious towards Peter by restoring him when Jesus resurrected. It can and will happen to us too. The second kind of persecution will be on the word. Some people will be very likely look, looking for a formula to get him or her out of the current situation. Therefore, he's very happy to hear the word and the promises that's given during the service. And that's these people belong to the category where the seed is sown on stony ground, where they are excited when they hear the word, when pressure applied very quickly, they allow the word to be stolen. These people is, are not interested to build a strong foundation with the word of God. They might not even be interested in the Lordship of Christ. Therefore, they give up and stumble very easily. That's not how God wants us to turn out as a believer. He wants our faith to keep growing. Amen? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4 says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other so that we ourselves, both of you among the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecution, tribulation that you endure. It takes patience and courage to stand in faith regarding the word that we have heard either in the service or received from the Lord in private fellowship. We can have a kind of faith that grows exceedingly when we allow the word of God to take root in our life through meditation and practicing what is being taught. You know, when we listen to the word, meditate and practice it, it is like allowing the seed to be sown on good ground, to germinate, to grow, and grow into a tree. Just like what I said last Sunday, the eucalyptus tree, when the seed is allowed to grow into a conviction, 
just like an eu the eucalyptus tree. It will grow to 100 meters tall, 7 meters wide. It is very difficult to uproot that kind of tree. So that's what the devil doesn't want. The devil, devil doesn't want your conviction to be so strong, so much so that they, he, he and his cohort, cohort, cohort cannot steal from you. Remember, the purpose of the tribulation and the persecution are devised by the devil to steal the word from our hearts. Let me move on by giving you the definition of tribulation. According to strong concordance, it's telepsis, and credit to uh, precept for expanding the definition. It means to crush, to press together, to squash, hem in, compress, squeeze in, derived from the word thlau, to break, originally expressed sure physical pressure on a man. Telepsis is a strong term which does not refer to minor inconveniences, but to real hardship. If you look at the picture on your screen now, it, it is like, you know, being the olive being pressed by this equipment, uh, this uh, traditional equipment to press the olive in, in order to get the olive oil and so on and so forth. It is really very difficult times. This verse mentioned that by the people who belong to this category stumble, fall away, leave the Lord, get offended, Stop attending church because of the various reasons. The Bible revealed to us very clearly that tribulation and persecution will arise for the word's sake to steal the word of possibly the possible conviction that we can develop and have faith grounded on it. So I want you to remember when tribulation and persecution comes your way, it is to steal the word in your heart. You say, oh, if that's the case, Pastor, I will not listen to the word. Don't be deceived. The devil is not a gentleman. He will come and make your life miserable anyway. But the difference is when you have the word, you experience the grace of God. It's just like a cushioning effect that protects you, grants you the grace and the strength to go through that difficult time until the breakthrough comes. Jesus wants us to allow the word to take root in our lives so that we can stand firm during tribulation and persecution. He does not want us to fall away because we have been because we have very shallow faith or have no solid conviction. Now, let me give you an example. Many years ago, when Russia opens up a door for the gospel to be preached in the stadium or many other facilities, there were many evangelists who flew in to hold big crusades in Russia. There were many evangelists with the healing gifts who preached the gospel. Now, please do not be mistaken. I believe in preaching the gospel with the um, healing and miracles following. And uh, many decided to accept Christ. However, many fell away from the Lord when they were not taught about the difference between healing and miracles. Healing is a process. It takes time. But miracle is instantaneous. Unfortunately, most of the people who came were looking for miracles and they have no patience to witness the healing um, process. So many of them left the church after they are being saved. Right? So, no. Listening to the word is not trying to look for a formula or quick fix to meet our needs. They said they tried Jesus for healing, but they, it did not work for them. Why? Because they were looking for a formula, a quick fix. All too often, we have seen brothers and sisters, including ourselves, seem passionate and enthusiastic about God and His word. We are on a spiritual high, especially after a Sunday sermon, a seminar or conference. Suddenly, the people either lost their zeal, their passion, the drive, their enthusiasm, or slowly stopped attending church or returned to the world. It could be their prayer is not answered or it wasn't fast enough as they wanted, wanted it to be. There's no depth and proper foundation of what we should be appreciative of what the Word of God say and what Jesus has done for us. These are very shallow faith and we must not be like that. If we have to be honest with ourselves, this happened to us when we are disappointed with God, under stress, or challenges in our life that comes our way, we crumble under it. The Christian life is not a bed of roses every day. It does not promise us that we will be free from tribulation, but it does promise us to be able to overcome the tribulation when it happens in our lives. How do we deal with those tribulations in our lives? What should be the conviction in the Word or the seed that we should have sown or learned from the pulpit to help us weather through the storm of life? Let me use a few scriptures to sow into your heart right now. Your job, remember, is to be receptive and accept the word. Please remember, we will have the harvest of the fruit 
all the grain based on what we have planted in the soil. The seed is the word. Romans chapter 8, verse 35, 37 to 38. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 and 2 says, But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, for you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall your, the flame scorch you. Psalms 34, verse 6 and 17 says, This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Now remember, the seed is the word. The sower sowed the seed. God used his servant, the fivefold ministries, to sow the seed in your life, to teach you to stand on the word. And these three scriptures tells us the character of God and his nature. God is a good God. He's a good heavenly father. He's the God who operates on covenant, especially his covenant of promise. He will never violate his covenant, which is also his word. His word is his covenant. His word and him are one. He will never contradict, deny, nor allow his word not to make good what he has promised. He's not a liar, therefore he will act on what he has promised. Therefore, his promise will always come to pass. It is always yes and amen. He has perfect love for us. It is the agape love that always seeks the good and the best of everyone of his children. He has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. In fact, the Holy Spirit, the third person of Godhead, literally live on the inside of us. That's why we need to remember that we are a covenant in covenant relationship with God, that nothing will separate out God's love from us. And when God's love is not separated from us, we are more than conquerors in Him. That nothing in this life will be able to separate God's love from us. He will journey with us. And we will cry out to the Lord when we pray. His eyes are upon us because we have the imputed righteousness of Christ. And God says that He will deliver us. But the deliverance of the Lord takes time. And we need patience. And patience will only come when we have a conviction. When our conviction that allow the seed of the Word of God to germinate and grow into a tree. When our faith is in the form of a tree, no longer in seed form, it is very difficult to steal. And that's why we, we are not moved by the circumstances. We are not moved by the tribulation that the devil throws at our way. We are not affected by the, 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 um, the wiles of the devil or the fiery dust of the devil because our faith is built on the Word. The, the Word of God is like a shield to us. And then we have the sword of the Holy Spirit. We counter what the devil throw at us with the word. And like I say, the more you listen to the word, the more conviction you have, it produces 34, 64, and 100 fold in your life. And you're so convinced that when you walk through the fire, it will not scorch you. When you walk, uh, walk across the river, it will not overflow you because God is with you. Amen. You're able to say that because you're so convinced. Remember, the seed can be stolen, but it cannot be uprooted. The tree cannot be uprooted if you allow your faith to be developed into ever-increasing faith in God. Amen? So, even though if you're caught between the rock and a hard place, God is there. You're more than a conqueror since His presence, His assurance, His resources are made available to us. No tribulation will be able to harm us because we... He will walk through with us. He promised to listen to our prayers when we are afflicted, in distress, going through a tribulation or facing an adversity in our lives. He will deliver us through it. Amen? Now, let me give an example. I remember coming back to Singapore from the mission field more than 20 years ago. We had not, not much saving after paying for the first part of our theological education. We were living very simply in a mission field. It was challenging because 
being back in Singapore because of the high cost of living without financial support, a job, and a soon delivery of a baby. It was tough. We could have been bitter with God. We could have stumbled. No, it was the conviction that I wrote in the above passage that saw us through. God came through for us. I was given an opportunity to preach in a recognized denomination church. They said they liked my Sunday sermon and offered me a position in the church. God provided for my family when we spent six years serving in this church. In fact, God provided a substantial amount for us to travel for a holiday in New Zealand because we have not taken a rest for a prolonged period. While we weren't well off, but there was no need in our lives when we were with the, this church for six years. Thereafter, God continued to watch over my family and never left nor forsook us. The theological stand that God is always good despite of the tribulation got stronger as I continued to prepare sermon, did my study on the Word, and meditate on the truth. I continued to mature as a child of God. The Word of God tr produces fruits in my life, some 30 fold, 60 fold, and some 100 fold. God has continued to help us to bounce back despite of the devil's scheme to send persecution and tribulation in our lives as a family. Honestly, we live in a society that pack our worth based on, our, on merits, that we feel worthless and lousy once we are no longer at the prime of our lives or when we are hit by a crisis. Our whole identity will be shaken if it has been associated with our academic excellence, excellence in sports and work for Fortune 500 companies. I'm not saying that all this is no good. It is good. But sometimes things can happen. And if we associate our identity with our achievements. And when things happen, it could be because of the illness, it could be because of the economic crisis, it could be because of many factors because we live in a broken and fallen world. The best identity that we can have is actually in Christ. When we have the identity, we will not be lost, disillusioned, disappointed, feel defeated or depressed. If, if, if we feel defeated and depressed, the devil has successfully stolen the word of God from us regarding our identity in Christ. Now, I have listed down some new creation realities in the past regarding our new identity in Christ that help us to go through difficult time. And I'd like to go through it with you. He sent Jesus to die for me because I'm worthy and priceless. I will not perish but have eternal life. I'm a child of God. I'm justified by faith. I have peace with God. I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm an heir of God, joint heir with Christ, and will be glorified with Him. I'm strong in the grace of God. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. In Christ, I'm His workmanship. Therefore, He has a good plan for me. God shall supply all my needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. I'm confident that He hears my prayer when, when I'm doing according to His will. Remember, this topic on identity in Christ is also the seed of the Word of God that has been sown into our lives. How much fruit it will produce is dependent on how receptive our hearts have been. None of us are able to earn or achieve the status given to us based on our own strength. It is purely the abundance of God's grace and His agape love that He has chosen to bless us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So let us continue to build on these new creation realities so that it will grow into a conviction, like I say, into a tree, no longer in seed form. Therefore, no matter what comes our way, be it tribulation or persecution, we stand firm because the word is deeply rooted in our hearts. In conclusion, we live in a broken and fallen world. The, the earth is cursed. That uh, the atmospheric sphere and the earth is different from the time of creation before the fall. All kind of sin and evil came into the world after the fall of Adam and Eve. There will be sufferings in this world. We have an enemy. The devil and the fallen angels are waiting for their time to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire. These, they still have the legal rights to be on earth and carry out as much damage to mankind as possible. We need to rightly divide the word so that we can identify the work of God and the scheme of the devil. Tribulation, adversity, and persecution are clearly stated in this passage of Scripture that the intention is to steal the Word of God from our lives. Honestly, if we continue to let Him steal from us and rob us of our joy and faith, or we can decide to ensure that our hearts belong to the good sword, we decide. Yes, we decide whether we want to be the hardened ground, the stony ground, or allow the thorns to which is the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, to choke the word of God 
or be the good soil. It is wise to be the good soil. Amen? So, may I encourage you, as you listen to the word, rightly divide the word, know who God is, know the scheme of the devil, take the, allow your heart to be the good soil, to listen, to be receptive, to accept the word of God, meditate on the word of God, act on the word of God, let the word of God take effect into your life, 34, 64, and 104, so that the seed will germinate, the seed of the word of God will germinate, germinate and become a conviction, just like the tree. So the devil will not be able to steal the tree. The devil will not be able to uproot the tree, but he can steal the word. So stop allowing him to steal the word of God from your life by taking notes of what is being taught today. Discuss it with the cell group so that you, your retention rate of the word will be higher. Let's bow our head and pray. With every head bow and every eyes closed, I'd like to ask the most important question. If you're here with us this service, you're not a Christian. You have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you'd like to receive Him today. I'd like to pray with you. Say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me on the cross. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart today. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you have said that prayer, I'd love to hear from you. Please write to me. My email address is written at the bottom of this page. I'd like to connect with you, send you some materials, and notify you when our church reopens. Right now, I'd like to pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, I praise you and thank you that truly your word has gone forth. It will not return void before you, but it shall accomplish all that you have purpose for it to do. I pray that all of us will make adjustments to our heart, that we will be receptive and accept your word. We want to allow the word to take root in our lives, to produce 34, 64, and 104. I pray that, Father, all of us will have an exceedingly increasing faith in you. We praise you and we thank you that you are a good and faithful God. Now may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed the service today and thank you so much for joining us. And I know that you've been encouraged by the preaching of the Word, that you know that God loves you and He has good thoughts toward you. You can continue to follow us on our website uh, and our social media accounts in YouTube, Facebook, you can Instagram, or simply drop us an email to keep in touch. And here at ICS, we're a church, we're a family that's blessed to bless the community and the nations. So we hope that you were blessed today and you're really starting to think about how you can be a blessing uh, to your neighbours and those around you. Well, we hope you have a great Sunday ahead, and we look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless.